Hey YouTube, well, go on. welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna change our spindle on this um, Honda Civic. So if your Honda Civic's built like this, it's gonna be the same, it's gonna be the same no matter what year it is, even for the older one, because the bearings, they're not bolt in bearings, they're pressed in. So it's not like um, the, car, the other cars that have it pressed in. So what we're gonna do, we're going to take off the um take off everything and send it send it to like um a shop that have like a shop that do pressing because the strut we changed the strut the strut was bent a little change the strut and then the wheels still have like a camera in so it turns out to be that it's not only the strut was bent also the the spindle or the knuckle whatever you call it so let's get started in that. And then you take this off and anything that's touching the, the knuckle. So guys, you're gonna need a cutter pliers to remove the cutter pin. Kind of straighten it as much as you can. Knock it through, just like that. Now we're gonna have, um, Thing is 19 let me see so it's 19 millimeter so you might have to beat this with a hammer just knock right here you can see that I knocked it previously because um it's gonna like stays in there stuck but once you knock here it's gonna come loose uh, so um we need to take off this right here and we need to take out the ABS sensor, which is right here. And we need to take off the the brake caliper. And we also need to remove this bolt right here. So guys, what we do so far, we take out this right here. That's um, 12 millimeter. This right here, 10 millimeter. This is the ABS sensor, just pull that out. And these over here are 17 millimeter. So we have one right there, one right there. Now we need to hook the rotor up, um, the caliper up. So you wanna get some WD-40. Spray that, spray that down. So there's two ways you can take this out. You can use um, some screw thread to um, screw through there and it will push it out or you can knock it with a hammer and this we need to take this out too but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna knock it with a hammer so guys you're gonna need to get this what is this, this is an impact screwdriver we're gonna put it in here twist on it and knock it and it should get loose lucky me when I knock that part this come out but normally it don't come out this easy you might have to just knock around the edge like this to get the rotor off so now what we're gonna take we will need to take this off so we're gonna get a center punch or Something like that to kind of take this part out so this is what I'm talking about knock it in right here So just like that. So guys, it take an inch and a quarter socket. 
just to take this off make sure it's free like that if not you gotta spray it and knock it in so we need to take off this cutter pin right here to remove the ball joint some WD-40 spraying there and also it's 19 millimeter all right we get it to come off we we'll get a hammer and knock right here Just trying to hook the brakes at a better spot. I don't want it to fall. So now you see that. Now we need a pry bar. So guys, we need to take out the 17 millimeter right here. And also, um, we need to take this out too. Which we're just gonna be like this. Maybe we can use a screwdriver now. So that's, that's good so far. Now we need to take out this 17 millimeter. Take out the spindle. Now we gotta send it so they can press the bearing out and put this in the new um, in the new spindle. But if if you buy a used spindle, like from a junkyard or something, you might get it just like this. So you just need to just put it put it back up once you get it like this. But if not, you get it from the dealer. You're just gonna get this piece, not this piece. You gotta buy this piece and the bearings, and that's basically it. So I'm going to go send it out to get pressed, then I'll install it. Also, I'm going to change this part right here, but I'm going to wait till I get the spindle so I can have this lock in the spindle. Take that off. But so when I get back, back get it, when I get that back from the shop, I will go ahead and continue the video. So YouTube, we back again and we have the, this is day two, by the way. So we, we finally get the, the hub. Um, this is the old one. This is the new one, as you can see, the difference in the rust and dirt. So yeah, if you when you order this part, that's what it come like. If you order it from the dealer, but if you order it used, I'll go to the junkyard to take it off. You're gonna get it off like this. So just keep that in mind and Make sure when you get it, you want to spin it. Make sure you don't hear no noise. I don't hear no noise and I don't feel any resistance or any like grit in it, any rough spot in it. So you want to check for that as well. So. Just like that. And then once that's done, 
it's time to go back up so we're gonna install it on it so what we're gonna do first we're gonna put it under our strut so we're gonna lift it up install it just like that and now we're gonna run our um, screw to go through it so on the back just kind of hook it right here on the back we have like a small indent right here so you will see it. I don't have no light the light on the camera die oh okay so right here you see this your screw gonna go in there and hold it so once you put this up there run the screw through it it should hold it up there so let's do that part so we got the screw right here and also you got to make sure this gap right here in the back goes in this right here you can see that a little part of it come down so you want to make sure you put it in there it's kind of it's like it lock in there because if you don't push it up all the way if it's not there you're gonna have a gap like that right there so you want to make sure there's no gap so you want to line it up push it up you can see that the gap is gone now and now we can push through our screw And that's going to be 17 millimeter. Can you go ahead and run that in? So once we get that in, what we can do now, the next step we got to do is put this in here. So you can see that you have some splines there. You want to make sure that spline line up with this spline right here. Let me get some light. All right, guys. So now you can see that we have some splines on this want to make sure it lines up with this so what you can do is just put it in line it up turn it and then it will line it will lock into place so once you hold it like this you turn it try to find it then it lock into place you can see once it lock into place it's gonna go in just like that now it's time to catch back our um lower control arm you can pull down on it if you're strong enough if not just get a prior bar the same way you take it out put it back the same way so i think i'm strong enough so i'm gonna do that so yeah i was strong enough to get it you can see it's in now so we're gonna get our our um our nut so this one you got to tighten it you can't really get a um, torque wrench in there but just go ahead and tighten that and So what you can do is just just put this in like this to, so you can pull on it some more and get it to be tight enough so once it's tight enough guys don't forget to put back your pin this this help is so this screw don't never fall off right here so always remember to put back this So guys, um, the torque spec is 181 foot, not um, newton meters of torque. I think that's 133 foot pound, somewhere around there. But I, don't, I know it's 108, um, 81 foot um, newton meter torque. Um, let me look it up so you guys can get it. So guys, it's um, 181 newton meter of torque for the for the for the um 
the regular one, the one that with the 2.0, and then the one with the type part, the type part and the SI that's gonna be that's gonna be a hundred um two hundred and forty five newton meter that's one hundred and eighty one foot pound of torque so there you go also make sure you lock this in once that locked in you're good to go time to get your rotor and install your rotor once you get your rotor you can get your screw you want to line up your holes put it in so this screw you don't have to over tiny just snug it in because you don't want when it's time to do it again you gotta try to take it off so what we're gonna do we want to make sure we push this off the rotor push this back plate off the rotor because if you don't it's gonna make noise So guys, the next step we have to clear that we need to put back this right here and put that this in here, your, your speed sensor. So we need to put this back, put back your speed sensor down here and tighten those in and also set back our caliper. So you want to make sure everything is tight. So double check your work, make sure that's tight, this tight. Make sure this is tight, make sure this is tight down here. Make sure this is tight and you have that pin right there. Come on this side, make sure this is tight, make sure this is tight, make sure you have brake both bo um brake bolt brake pad in. So we have both of them in, this is in. So everything looking good so far. The reason why I didn't tighten this yet, it's because I'm going to change it so I just going to run it in like this going to get a wrench to fit on this right here and then you can break it loose then unscrew this so guys um this right here once we set that back we need to take this loose so we just need to do this this is going to be 22 millimeter wrench that's what I used to take that off we're going to come right here take this back off let's put that to the side then we can unscrew this just like this because this is bent so once we unscrew this just like that we need to get the new one which is right here part number part number right there and now we need to take it out I'm fighting with it but it's coming it's coming out all right so we got it off so we just need to wind it and guys you're gonna need to do you're gonna need to do your alignment on these even by just changing the spindle by itself you're gonna need to do an alignment so even if you put this the exact way but what you want to do is set it to a lever where you can um you want to set it to a lever where you can at least have the wheel straight enough to drive it to the alignment to the alignment rack to get it aligned then we can go ahead and just tighten this up right here just like that so once you tighten this up you just want to put a cutter pin in there so this don't come all the way off if it should ever get loose and this we need to tighten that up back too you this you just have to just snug it up because um they go you when you take it to the alignment rack they're gonna take this off a little bit so that should be good they're going to have to undo this screw to to set the alignment on it so so far everything good so far so all we have to do now is just put our wheel on and tighten it up and then we can 
go for um, test ride, make sure everything is good, and also take it to the alignment rack. And that's it for this video, guys. Please go ahead, like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Peace out. See you next time. So, yeah, guys, everything is all back together. And we just got to lower it down and send it out.